Hi, welcome everyone. Okay, so let's get started. Analytics and insights, Instagram and Facebook insights. We're going to look at the most important uh, insights for 2021. The data that you really need to be looking at to improve your your performance in social media and to enhance your social media marketing. Now, there are two ways in which we can access our insights. We can do this via scheduling software. If you're if you're serious about your um, social media marketing and you also have the budget, I highly recommend investing in some scheduling software. This allows you to uh, to pre-schedule maybe a week's worth, two weeks worth of, of content and then you get it out of the way in one hit. It's, you don't have to think about it except to respond and engage as the uh, posts are scheduled. It also gives you much richer data than what can be uh, viewed from uh, your app. Um, but however, for today, we're going to just take a look at the insights that we can glean from both the Instagram uh, app and from Facebook Insights page. To view the uh, Instagram insights, you just in your um, profile, just hit uh, view professional dashboard. One thing to note here, if you have your Instagram account set up as a personal account, you will need to switch that over to a business uh, profile. So you just navigate to the settings and, and follow the instructions there to navigate um, and change, sorry, to change you it to a business profile. We are going to take a look at both uh, individual uh, grid posts insights, story insights, and the overall account insight today. First of all, let's have a look at our, we have a look at our grid posts here. So we've got a, a great looking grid. And then to view the insights, we just click on the thumbnail and hit um, view insights. And we're looking for things uh, we're looking for engagement metrics, things like likes, shares, website clicks, follows, and comments. These are um, our what we call our engagement metrics. We're looking to see what um, what type of posts have high engagement. When you click through to that individual post, uh, you will see. Uh, and these icons, and they're fairly self-explanatory. So these are the likes, these are the comments, these are the shares, and these are the bookmarks. Uh, we've got profile visits and reach. So that gives you your, um, your engagement uh, metrics. And what we want to do, our, our, the reason, the whole reason for examining these is we, we look at these measurements and we want to analyze them. So we're looking at what posts are getting the most engagement, trying to understand why they're getting engagement. We also want to have a look at posts that are, are, are getting nothing and or, or you know very little. And then we we take that data and we optimize our ongoing marketing. And in that way, we can really improve our social media performance. If we scroll down a little bit further in our individual post uh, insights, we can look at the discovery section. So this is how people found your content. We've got follows and we've got reached, and we've got impressions. Don't be too um, obsessed about number of followers. A much more important metric is your engagement metric. How engaged are your followers versus how many followers you have? Some of your, your followers might not be engaged. They could be bots. It's really important. It, it's much better to have 3,000 engaged followers uh, versus 10,000 disengaged. So focus on engagement versus followers. We all like to see our account grow, but it's the engagement metric that's important. Now we've got reach versus impressions here. So reach is how many uh, 
individual, how many unique Instagram accounts saw your post versus impressions. Impressions takes into account multiple views. People can also um, view your uh, account via um, the home uh, section or explore in um, Instagram. But I just wanted to have a look at the all important hashtags and just to make sure um, that you have considered a hashtag strategy. And by um, doing so, if you really understand what hashtags are going to drive, um, create awareness of your account and, and help extend your reach, jump into the Instagram app and um, have a, and, and just research what hashtags you think might be, um, might relate to your business and how popular they are. Also have a look at what your um, competitors are doing as well. What hashtags are they using? And put this list together so you have it in a, a, a handy place. Keep it on your phone. Um, keep it in a Google Doc or something like that so that you can use it all the time. And also another little tip is to post your hashtags into the uh, first comment section rather than uh, in your caption section. And this, this way um, it keeps things neat and tidy and doesn't detract from what you're saying in your comments. So there are a few little tips there. Now we're back at the uh, account level of your Instagram insights. So you'll see total, um, you'll, you'll see your top posts here and top stories. If you hit see all, you get this particular view. So it's a grid of, your, uh, of some of your posts. You can look at um, up to two years data in, in these, and you can look at the type of content. So that would be video, carousel, single image. And then you can look at the different metrics. So reach, likes, comments, that type of thing. So again, spend some time uh, studying and um, to see what is working, you know, are videos working more than images? Is it a particular type of image that works better than, than others? And you'll, um, I, you'll be able to identify a pattern here. So again, we're looking at what um, posts, what type of content is getting the most engagement. And for our story section, uh, the three metrics that we want to look out for here, again, is reach, replies, and retention rate. So are you encouraging your uh, audience to reply to your stories? Uh, are you adding quizzes, asking questions, using really high, you know, great content that is engaging? So that, that's how we encourage replies. And then have a look at your retention rate. So if you're using multiple slides in your stories, are, are people have a look at uh, the number of people viewing on the first slide versus the last uh, to get an idea of, uh, of people uh, staying for the full journey. If they're not, why, do you understand why not? Really play around with this and see what works for your, your brand uh, to see what type of, um, you know, how, maybe you've got too many slides in there. Maybe it's not the right type of content to, to be engaging. So there, that's what we want to look at is um, the retention rate uh, as, a, as a useful metric for success in our Instagram stories. Now we're back in the um, account overview section and we can, we can look at, um, uh, it, it allows us to look at data from the last 30 days or the last seven days. Our account statistics uh, where we, here I've got some negative uh, stats here. And this is the whole reason we're going into our um, Instagram um, insights is to see how we can improve our overall statistics. Um, we've got our audience breakdown here so we can see what, uh, how many followers we've gained and lost. But I like to look at this um, information. So we've got a little bit of demographic information here. Um, we've got our audience. And this is incredibly useful for when we're creating content. So for this account, we have um, 
41% uh, uh, just over uh, um, are between the ages of 25 and 34. And then we've got the, the next bracket here. So what that means to me is I'm going to create content for women in this particular age bracket. So that really helps me get a handle on what I need to create. Then if I take a look at um, the, act, the active, uh, the times that my audience is active. So you might um, decide to post three times a week. That might be a realistic schedule for you. So dive in to your, um, the times and see when your audience is most active. This will help with your reach and ultimately help improve your overall performance. So on Mondays, I'm going to go for posting at 6 p.m. And, uh, and, and see how that goes. And make these adjustments and, uh, and, and see how you go, you know, in, and compare how you're going a month on to see how everything is working out there. Now we're going into Facebook in, insights and quite a lot of what we learned in Instagram is applicable to our Facebook insights as well. So in your uh, Facebook business page, navigate down on the left hand men menu to insights. And you will um, arrive on this summary page, which gives you a lot of detailed account information. You can adjust the date range up here. But what I really want to look at is, again, this individual post uh, information. And by making adjustments at the individual post level, I'm going to see improvements in this summary level. Uh, things are, are fairly self-explanatory here. I just wanted to point out one thing, uh, the difference between page likes and page followers. This can be a little bit confusing. Um, and Facebook is actually phasing out page likes and going to um, have just page followers in the not too distant future. So page follower, if you're a page follower, it means you um, will see all that pages um, uh, postings in your feed. Um, and then page likes, you'll see it more intermittently. So that's that's the difference there. And it can be a little bit confusing. And then we've got our all important post engagement um, metrics there. Underneath that, um, in the summary page, uh, we've got uh, post information here. So it shows you your top five most recent posts. Just underneath here, it will say show more or show all, then that takes you to the post um, uh, page in your, um, in your in, uh, Facebook insights. And there you can look at a broader range. So you can look at a month's worth. And there's a few things we're trying to identify here. We're looking at um, our post topics and trying to identify patterns. So what are the most popular topics that get the most reach and the most engagement. Uh, and that reach can be organic or paid. And the engagement is either a reaction or a, a post click, it could be a share as well. So in this very small uh, data set here, I'm going, going to be looking at uh, this one, which is a video which seemed to gain uh, a better reach than, than this one here and more engagement. We've also got our types of posts. So this is really important. So these are your images. These are your links. So that could be a link to a blog post. It could be a link to another person's website. And then we've got our videos here. Uh, so looking at also what type of content is getting um, a, a, a wide reach and increased engagement. 
in our um, post section, this is your this is uh, the left hand menu. You can also look at um, that audience uh, data uh, that we looked at in Instagram. It's this is fairly similar. Just one thing to note here. So we're looking at um, what time is our audience online? What time in Facebook language are our fans online? If you hover over these um, days of the week, it will show up here on um, on the most. It'll show you the most popular um, times of day. Please note this is in Pacific time, and so what I do is a quick hack around that. I, you can't change the setting in Facebook Insights. You can change the time settings in um, Facebook um, in Analytics for Facebook ads. What I do, I just jump in to uh, Google Chrome and I will go here, um, 3 a.m. Pacific time to Brisbane time. And then that Google just tells me what that time is. And you only need to do this, uh, you know, once every three months or so to just check that, um, uh, to, you know, jot down when people are, on, are online, when the largest <clears throat> share of your audience is online. So that's, that's another useful um, practice is to work out when people are online and then post when uh, your audience is, um, when most of your audience is online, uh, so you expand your reach. Facebook Insights also uh, in the people section on the left hand menu has that same information that Instagram has. So we're looking at the breakdown um, by uh, men and women and giving us our age demographic here. So you can see for this particular brand, um, it's not doesn't um, have a huge following with men much more in um, this particular these. Uh, this is our our target demographic here. And so again, use this to craft your, your content. Uh, on that, if you scroll further down that, that page, you'll also see a breakdown by country and city. So if you have a national brand or indeed an international brand, you can look at um, how popular you are in certain countries or cities, and you can tailor your content uh, for those countries or cities as well. So by examining our engagement um, and using this uh, particular formula of time, topic and uh, content data, we can really improve our social media marketing. So it just, um, it's not that difficult to analyze the, the data. It's just um, being disciplined and, um, enough in, uh, in your busy uh, schedule to set aside some time uh, to um, do this analysis. And you only need to do it, um, you know, if you, you do it four times a year, that's a realistic, um, uh, goal. Um, if, if you're, you know, running a small business, I, that's what I, I, I recommend uh, doing and just monitoring your results as you go along. For your home homework, uh, jump into your uh, Instagram or Facebook insights and really familiarize yourself with what's going on. Spend some time uh, identifying your most popular posts, uh, look at who your audience um, is and uh, look at the best time to post. Then run an experiment for a month, um, looking at, you know, how you can improve your, your posts, looking at the most popular uh, posts and um, rinse and repeat and those. And then in a month's time, see where you're at and see if your uh, social media marketing has improved. So that brings us to the end of today's teach ses session. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for, for joining me and, um, and I will see you sometime soon.